Hello and welcome to Tucko Plantation near Richmond, Virginia. My name is Colonel Thomas Mann Randolph and I was master of this plantation in the 1700s. The plantation today is known as the boyhood home of Thomas Jefferson. And I'd like to tell you that story. It's a very interesting one. You see, I was his cousin and his friend. You have to start the story of Thomas Jefferson, though, with the story of the Randolph family. Randolph family, which is my last name, was a very large Virginia family. We were very wealthy. We had lots of social power. We had lots of political power. We tended to marry our cousins and we had lots of kids. I, for instance, had 13 children with my wife, Ann Carey. Second wife, I had more children. So we had lots of kids around and we named them a lot of the same names and we'll talk about that as we go along here. The first Randolph to come to America came from England in 1669. His name was William, married a lady named Mary Isham. They had nine children together. The second oldest child was named Thomas, like me, and he was my grandfather. Thomas came here in about 1700 uh, to the land that he received from a land grant. It was about 10,000 acres, and he expanded it to over 25 at some point in time. Now, with those nine children, William and Mary are often called the Adam and Eve of Virginia, and indeed they were. My father's name was William. He's the son of Thomas, so we had a William, a Thomas, and another William. And after that, there was me and two more Thomases. We even got confused as to who was who in the family. My father married a lady named Mariah Page, and they are responsible for building the home here. And here it is. Peter and his wife, Jane and my parents, who you remember as William and Mariah, were best of friends. They did everything together. The women were cousins. They were concerned very much because people tended to die at a young age at that point. In those days of all kinds of illnesses, all kinds of accidents, they decided that they wanted to ensure what would happen to their children if something happened to them so the children were orphaned. Who would educate the children? Who would take care of the property? Who was the person who would make sure the, the children were healthy and grew up to be able to inherit their properties? They wrote a contract, Peter and William wrote a contract in their wills that if something happened to either one of the families, the other family would go and live with a family whose children were orphaned. So in 1745, true to their word, Peter and Jane Jefferson and their children came up the road which we're going to walk up to now and we'll talk about their arrival. So in 1745, up this road, which we call the Cedar Lane, came the Jefferson family. Four children, Peter Jefferson, who as I mentioned before, was a big, strong, burly man, an explorer, a map maker, and then there was, of course, his wife Jane came along as well. Thomas says later on in life that his first memory in life was riding on horseback on a pillow being held by slaves. And that's, of course, what we saw as he came up the house. They were to be here for seven years. Tom and I became best friends. We became schoolmates. We were, of course, cousins. And, of course, Randolph's as well. This was our schoolhouse. I have such great fond memories of this building. I almost get teary-eyed when I think of the activity, I think of the education, think of our schoolmasters, and all our friends who were part of this schoolhouse. Let's go on in and we'll talk about it a little bit. And this is our schoolhouse. What a place this would have been. I remember the noise, 
We had seven children probably in school at any one time, almost all cousins, so we knew each other. There were girls and boys. The girls stayed for a certain length of time in studies, and then they moved into the household to learn how to do things in the kitchens and uh, the other duties of, uh, of the plantation mistress. This is where our schoolmaster would have sat. Douglas was his name, Reverend Douglas, and we had lots of fun with him. We actually played some tricks on him, so again, I believe that uh, it would have been a very active, noisy place. We went to school in the summertime because the roads were impassable in the wintertime and Reverend Douglas could not get here. Reverend Douglas also uh, ran a Latin school that Thomas attended later on after he left here. This is probably the first place that Thomas would have seen a dome. And of course, he became famous for domes that he built because he was an architect as long as, as well as a statesman. As you know, Thomas was our third president. He also was the man who was responsible for the Declaration of Independence. So this is where you first would have learned to write, where you would learn the penmanship and the things that were necessary for the things he accomplished later in life. It was an amazing place to grow up on Tuckahoe, an amazing school for us all to attend together, especially with our good friend and cousin Thomas. Let's go into the house and I'll show you something I'd like you to see. This is the inside of the house of the Tuckahoe Plantation. This room was a special room for many reasons. It was an office, it was a room where we had weddings, and it was a room where the family would gather at times for important discussions. This desk was my father's desk, William, William Randolph. And it's here that he and Peter Jefferson wrote the contract that said that if there were, either of the families was orphaned, the other family would go to live in the, in the house. As I said before, the Jeffersons never owned this house. This was always a, a Randolph house, but this is where that contract was written. Above the desk is a portrait of George Washington. Obviously, as you know in your studies, the first president of the United States and a very beloved man. There was a Randolph, actually the father of Robert E. Lee, the light horse Harry Lee, who said the quote that he was, uh, he, uh, Washington was first in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen. And the husband of my daughter, Nancy, Governor Morris was his name, actually said that Washington was too mighty for man. So Washington visited here once, and we were very, very proud as a family to have him. This is a piece that you might be interested in. This was left by the Jeffersons when uh, Thomas and uh, Thomas and Peter and his mother was left by the Jeffersons when they went back to Shadwell in 1752. What it is, it's a warmer. They put hot coals in here and you put it in under the bedclothes and it will keep you warm. Now you want to be a little careful about where you burn yourself, but it is some. Uh, it is something that is still living here, so this would have been 300 years old and it would have kept this family warm. Let's go outside and I'm going to uh, tell you another story about Thomas's stay here. This is the front of the house. The house faced the river and beyond is the Great James River. And that's the reason this plantation was here because of the James River. I'd like to tell another story about Thomas. In 1779, Thomas was the governor of the state of Virginia and he lived in Richmond. Richmond's about 12 miles from here. And Richmond was attacked by a British force under the command of 
Brigadier General Benedict Arnold. Have any of you heard of Benedict Arnold? He was a great traitor and much sought after for punishment here. So Thomas came with his family out to Tucko and then went back halfway to help bury some gunpowder. Came back here and then crossed the James River with his family and went back to Monticello in Charlottesville. Thomas Jefferson, a Randolph, my cousin, and a great man with great accomplishments. I passed on in 1793. I was here, however, for the Declaration of Independence and was so proud of that. I was here when our two oldest children got married and I was here for his Secretary of State, when he was Secretary of State under General Washington. I was not here, but I looked on from the afterlife on his great career in politics as vice president, as president, and actually the man responsible for the Louisiana Purchase, which made this country so much bigger and so much stronger. Thomas Jefferson, a great man, a great person, a great cousin, and a great friend. I'd just like to leave you with the thought, however, and I thank you for visiting Tucko. I want to leave you with the thought that God has indeed blessed America.